In today's lesson, we're going to go over three words in geometry that are important to understand. We have point, line, and plane. So let's go over point. Point is a location in space with no thickness. It's a location in space that has no dimensions associated with it. If you were to see a point illustrated in a picture or a drawing, you would see a black dot with a capital letter next to it. I chose capital letter A here just because it's the first letter in the alphabet. If you were to see this picture written down in a sentence, you would see the word point with the capital letter A next to it. So if this was a capital letter B, it would be written down as point B. So moving on to line. Line is a collection of straight points with no thickness or width that goes for infinity in both directions. So line is a collection of straight points. So I have a bunch of points here that help create this line with no thickness or width that goes for infinity in both directions. So these arrows here indicate that the line goes for, inf for infinity in both directions here. And again, there's no thickness or width, so I couldn't physically grab onto that line. Now, if you wanted to name this line here, I picked out two points, point B and point C. You need two points to name a line. So if I had a word problem, you could see it written down as line BC or line CB. Notice it doesn't matter the order those points are in, as long as you have two points associated with that. There's another way of writing this down, which I prefer, is just a symbol of a line above two points. Now notice this symbol has an arrow going both directions, so there's two arrows here. You need to have two arrows, otherwise it means something completely different. So I have line BC or line CB. It doesn't matter. There's also another way, which is not very common, but it's still, I still see it from time to time, is you have a lowercase letter next to the line here. So you can also write it down as line lowercase l, because I have a lowercase l here, but it's cursive. You'll generally see it cursive. So this is line lowercase l. This is the way you'd see it written down in a sentence, line lowercase l. The third word we're going to go over is plane. Plane is a two-dimensional surface with no thickness that goes for infinity in length and in width. So I've got a picture associated with this. And what we have here is a two-dimensional surface. So we have a length and a width that's two dimensions with no thickness. So imagine you had a piece of paper. So you had a piece of paper that went for infinity in all directions, but it had zero thickness. Like you literally, you couldn't measure the thickness. Now you generally don't see arrows on a plane, but I wanted to indicate that these, in theory, these sides go on forever in both directions. So what we have here is we have a plane, and you need three points to name a plane. I have points X, Y, Z, so I can name this point X, Y, Z. But just like a line, it doesn't matter the order those letters are in. Oops. So I have plane X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, or I could have plane X, Z, Y, X, Z, Y. It doesn't matter the order. I could also put plane Y, Z, X. So again, it doesn't matter the order, you just need to have three letters to name a plane. Now there's another way of naming a plane, and you'll see this sometimes, is if I have a uppercase capital letter in cursive in one of the corners of the plane, then I can name it that uppercase capital letter. So I have an uppercase T here, I have an uppercase cursive T here. So you can name it using three points, or you can name it using the uppercase capital cursive letter to name the plane. Now you want to be careful here. There's one thing you need to understand about naming a plane. A plane needs to be named with three points that are not in a row. That means collinear. So if you look right here, I have points, I'll just put it in the middle, we have points R, S, and T. Those three points are in a straight line, and if you look carefully, it's a little confusing on which plane that's on. Because in theory, we have a green plane here, where R, S, and T are touching it, but I have another plane in orange that's intersecting the green plane that also has points R, S, and T on it. So if you're to name a plane, you can't name it using three letters that are in a row. If you use three letters in a row to name a plane, that's wrong. So that's why I have another letter here, P. Let's see here. I'm going to name this orange plane R, P, T. 
And since R, P, and T are not in a straight line, that is a correct way of naming this plane. So that's something that's important to understand. So let's go back over the definitions of point, line, and plane. So a point is just a location in space with no thickness, but I have a line here that is created by a bunch of points in a straight line, indicated by these bunch of these little dots here. And if I expand this, I have another plane here, or I have a plane right here, that is a collection of a bunch of points as well. So it takes a bunch of points to create a line, it takes a bunch of points to create a plane. Now why do I really need to know what a point, line, and plane is? Well, point, line, and plane are the building blocks of geometry. If you didn't have points, you couldn't create lines. If you didn't have lines, you couldn't create planes. So in theory, you couldn't create a circle, a triangular prism, or actually this is a square prism, or a uh, cube, because you need points, lines, and planes to name those three shapes. Also, let's say if we had a map and we wanted to get from Dallas to Austin, well, a point would be used to locate Dallas, a point is used to locate Austin, and then you have a line segment which is part of a line, which would help find the distance between these two points. And then a plane would be used to act as the surface of the state of Texas. So we use points, lines, and planes all the time in the real world. Hopefully this helps you understand what a point, line, and plane is better than you did before.